Hi guys and thanks for watching again. Now this is not the beer brewing video I promised in one of my previous videos, but this video is about connecting this temperature sensor to the Raspberry Pi. And the reason that I have all this beer stuff over here is because I'm going to need this temperature sensor uh, to build a temperature controlled fermenting box. A box in which I place my stainless steel fermenting bucket. But first, this, well, let, me, let me cut this bottle. This is a beer I have brewed a couple of weeks ago and it turned out to be one of my favorite beers of all time. It is actually that good. And I fell in love with my own beer. Now it's a beer with three types of hop and it, those are Sass if I'm not mistaken, Citra and Cas Cascade and while fermenting I've added orange peel. That's why I have named this beer Orange Pea Ale. And the P is not a typo, it's just because I've named my brewery, my brewery, the Golden Shower Brewery. Now, this is the bottle I just got out of the fridge and these are my own bottle caps. And these are unused, as you can see, if you drink beer, that is. So, oh. oh. You heard that? That was awesome. And yes, this is the giant Duvel D. It's one of my favorite Belgian beers. Oh, that was noisy. I'm gonna pour it in this, also in this Duvel glass. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Now there is some stuff pouring into the beer right now. So I must stop right about now and as you can see there's quite some stuff in the in the bottle left that's because i've bottled a little bit too much of yeast w with the beer but that's okay and I've, I've, i took this beer to, this bottle to show you because this one has no label yet i was just lazy and did not label them yet but i'm drifting away here but before i continue one one sip of this goodness Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that is just awesome. Now, these are the temperature sensors I meant. Um, let me see. These are the, they came in in the package in the envelope like this, and as you can see, it's just like a normal temperature sensor. And that's that's what's so good about these. And let me just put it over here, and let me demonstrate the Raspberry Pi. What I did. I uh, connected the ground to, let me kind of hold it like this, the ground to the most left pin, the data pin is in the middle, and the voltage, the VCC as they, they call it, the 3.3 volts to the most right pin, and I added a, a 4700 ohm resistor between the data and the voltage pins. And that is actually all you have to do. Just connect this one to 3.3 volts, connect this one to ground, and add the data pin, that's that's important, to the fourth pin on, on the side of the 3.3 volts. So the side, this side. Not this one, but this. One, two, three, four. That's why where I've added the data pin. And the Raspberry Pi has some software built in just for these units. All you have to do is just enable a few things and this works out of the box. Now to show you how it works out of the box, I'm going to switch to my computer screen, a part of the, my computer screen, and show you what I did to make this work. It's absolutely easy, but it is, it is wonderful. And I've ordered lots of these, and that's what I'm going to do in my fer fermenting box. I'm gonna place these sensors everywhere within uh, at the bottom at the top and outside of the box just to control the temperature with um, Peltier uh, units Peltier plates which will be one of my next videos um, but I'm drifting away again I'm going to switch to my computer screen right now so there we go now as you can see I've just logged into this Raspberry Pi as you saw in the, the video there is no 
screen attached whatsoever so it's just over the eth eth ethernet and that's why i've logged in v using putty over here and this is the ip address of my raspberry pi now we're going to need to add a, a, a one line to the config file of the raspberry pi which is located in a slash boot and to do that you need to be root not to be rude, but root, <laughs> a carrot, uh, <laughs> whatever you call it. Um, uh, so you can use sudo for every comment you do, but uh, yeah, that, that just makes it more typing. So what I do m most of the time when having to enter more comments like root, I do just this. Which means I'm now root all the time until I log out or press Ctrl D. Now, like I said, we're gonna need to, no, gonna need to edit the slash boot slash config dot txt. So there we go. And at the bottom, there we are. I've added this line: dt overlay is w l or is that a one? That is a one w one dash gpio. After you've done that and written the file, you need to reboot the device. You can just enter reboot, sudo reboot, or whatever, whatever floats your boat, as long as you do not unplug the power and plug it back in. Now, when you're rebooted, you're going to need to be root again. So sudo su or enter sudo for every comment you need to do. And you, and you enter modprobe w one dash gpio and one more comment and then then we're then we're already done one mod probe w1 therm that's all now to read the temperature of this transistor or this this temperature sensor we're going to need to go to a directory called sys bus w1 devices there we first look at what what what's all there and the temperature sensor is something which starts with 28 now when i can just hot plug another of these temperature sensors just next to this existing temperature sensor and there will be another file with with another 28 pre present in, in this directory that's that's absolutely nice you can stack them i don't know what what's what's the limit of number of temperature sensors but I, I, my, I, my guess is that's a, that's a lot so co going to visit that directory like that and there we see that there is a, a file called w1 underscore slave we need to have a look at that file and there we are now this, this is some hexadecimal shit we don't need but this is important as long as this says yes we can read the temperature from here and this is the current temperature it, it reads and it, this this means that it is 23 degrees and 937 degrees after the, the dot so you have to divide this by a thousand so let me do that again and you see that it is has cooled down 0 0.1 degree uh, a half actually now i'm going to um, put my beer aside i'm going to hold it with my hand the temperature sensor right now and then I let it wait but it's probably heating up right now there we are 31 degrees let's let it heat up some more let's there we go 33.5 degrees celsius so that's all there is um now I'm going to write some software. I will add that to my GitHub uh, repository, and I'll as, as, as soon as that's done, I'll put it a link in the into the description of, of this video where you can find the software how to actually read these temperature sensors. And I'm going to probably also create some software to make graphs uh, graphs of out of it and and all other stuff. But the main thing it it is need is going to do is switch on and switch off the, the cooling units with uh, some relays and i'm building me building that fermenting box will be probably another youtube episode also so we'll be seeing more of this but for now this is it and yeah this is actually 
all there is to connect a temperature sensor to the Raspberry Pi. So thanks for watching.